yo, yo. All right, I've got a tip for you today that is going to make your content stand out on social media. If you've been following me for any length of time, you may have heard me talk about open graph technology. And what you're looking at is the result of having open graph technology on one of your web pages. Uh, what it does is it is just a set of tags, it's information that's on your web pages that certain platforms like Twitter, Facebook, um, Slack, Skype, my forum software called Discourse, for example, picks up on this. A lot of stuff, almost all web technologies are starting to pick up on open graph tags to serve little little snippets, little uh, vignettes like this one to, uh, you know, whenever you share a link to your content, this is the enhanced thing that gets displayed rather than just a, a basic URL, which doesn't tell you as much. So you definitely want to have open graph technology on your site, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But what I want to talk about in this video is how to optimize your images here, these big images, uh, and how to do use them most effectively. Most commonly, people will just insert any image in here. And uh, let me show you one of mine that is not particularly great. So here's an example of a, uh, let's see if I can make this smaller. Here's an example of one of my, this is the image I used. It's just a screenshot of something that was on the page that you could expect to, uh, to see when you visited a link. Uh, you know, when you visit this link from social media. But this example, which I first saw today and made, it made me want to do this video, this is so much better. This is amazing right here. What they've done is they've uh, sort of recreated the title of the post, sort of. Uh, they've given it some visual flair. They've got a different color here, a little bit larger font for uh, the subject, the main subject, and then uh, a little bit smaller font to uh, you know, give you the rest of the title, like we're talking about flat UI, okay, less attention causes uncertainty. It kind of gives you a lead as to what the content is going to be about. Another, <coughs> another thing I find very, very interesting about this is this additional branding they've included here. This is so smart. I've not thought to do this, uh, but now that I've seen it, I cannot unsee it. This is a really, really smart way to set up your open graph images if you want them to achieve the following. Number one, draw attention. Uh, having, having descriptive text, in my view, is better than just sort of a cryptic image that, you, you know, that has a lot like this is too many words on this, this is not a good image. But if it were just a picture, it maybe wouldn't tell us as much anyway. Certainly not with the type of content you'd expect to find on, on any of my sites. Uh, and so having something like this, there's just less here to parse. It's more to the point. And then you get the additional branding reinforcement, which is just so clutch. And then you have opportunities here to kind of get creative as well. So you can use different colors. Maybe you have different sections of your site or different types of content, different topical areas. And you want to brand different topical areas with different color schemes. Perfectly valid, totally cool. This little watermark of the branding note to go along with that is just so good. This is what I want you guys to take away from the video. And now I'm going to set you up with the information you need to make these images yourself. Okay, the first thing is the dimensionality of it. Okay, open graph technology, for whatever reason, all fo uh, Facebook and Twitter specifically have converged on an aspect ratio for this big image that's a little funky. It's 1.912. Uh, that's an odd one. You know, it's not 21 9, it's not 16 by 9, it's, it's not like an established one, it's sort of, sort of a weird one to, uh, to fit this mold. But when you create your images, I'm going to recommend, like here's, here's the, the one that we're looking at there, it's pretty big. And theirs is actually huge, it's 1960 by, you know, it's 1960 by 1004, something like that. But, the, or 1920 by 1004. But when you make these, I'm going to recommend, they have to be at least 600 pixels wide, but I'm going to say you should make them 960 pixels wide by 502 pixels tall. 960 by 502. Here's an example of one at 960 by 502. I'll be making my images uh, in this mold. Uh, so that's how you want to set it up. And then 
some things you want to take note of. Number one, some platforms, especially Twitter, will round off the corners of this thing. So you don't want to get anything too close to the edges, certainly not to the corners. But you also don't want to get anything too close to the edges here. You maybe want you know, some sort of buffer, some, some white space unit, maybe at least 30 pixels, that type of thing. You know, Make sure nothing is bumping up against the edges because you don't want, uh, you don't want anything getting too close to these edges. Uh, it just creates a cramped feeling. It's not good. You want these to be light, airy, attention getting, and hard hitting. And uh, so, so keep stuff off the sides and you, know, you can learn to optimize it clearly. Uh, these people have, have optimized the heck out of theirs. They're doing the best job I've seen of anybody with this. And so if you wanna make open graph tags really work for you, I'm gonna say this is the most important thing you can do. Uh, now, how do you add open graph tags to your site? Maybe you don't have them, you see this, and you're like, wow, I wanna do that. If you're using my software, if you're using Focus or Thesis, uh, my two word, it's really all the same thing. If you're using my WordPress theme, you can get the open graph box to add this stuff to your site in a way that's gonna preserve performance the most. It also makes it really easy. For example, if we want, I've got a post here I created today, I need to add uh, an open graph tag to it, I would go edit. And then in the WordPress post editor, I've got a little field where all I do, if I can upload this image to my media gallery, copy the URL, put it here, click update, boom, I've got, uh, and I've got an open graph image. So if I had made you know, an image like I'm telling you here, pardon me, uh, if I'd made one of these images and then uh, I would just upload it to my media gallery, you know, input it there, hit save, boom, my stuff's gonna work perfectly and have these gorgeous sharing images just like this. If you don't use my software and you want, still wanna add this stuff, you do have some options. Uh, here's two that I know of for sure. Number one is Jetpack. Jetpack comes, uh, or you know, it's, it's, it's sort of an adjunct part of WordPress. It's not technically part of a basic WordPress installation, but it is uh, run by Automatic, which is sort of the parent software company of WordPress, sort of. And uh, you can get open graph tags on your site that way. I don't like that approach because Jetpack adds a ton of crap to your website. It makes your WordPress admin function more slowly, which I find intolerable. And it also adds a bunch of JavaScript and junk to the front end of your website. Also some CSS, just a bunch of assets and crap that you don't need that's just gonna slow down your site. I, I just can't abide that sort of thing. Your other option, which is similarly not great in the sense that it's gonna add some stuff to your site, is to use the Yoast SEO plugin, which does have some open graph capabilities among its more um, tentacled outreach functionality that goes well beyond sort of basic SEO. Uh, so there's two ways that you can add that to your site if you're not using my software, but you know, if you want a fast website that works, where this type of, of ethos is in play all the time, hard hitting attention, give visitors what they want, get right to the point, beautiful typography, clear visuals, that type of thing, if that appeals to you, then you really like my software. You get focus, then you can add the open graph box. It's a $17 one-time fee, it's dirt cheap. Uh, you can set that up and then you can begin to enrich your pages with open graph technology and use the tips that I've given you today. All right, so now you know the deal. When you're creating these images, make them 960 by 504. Keep stuff off the edges, keep a buffer zone in there, add your branding to these images to reinforce your branding in social media whenever your content is shared, and you're gonna get better results from you know the promotional stuff that you do for your site. All right, stay tuned. Uh, if you want if you got questions or anything, drop them in the comments below and I'll see you soon, all right? Peace.